Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today one of my favorite machines um, back from the 80s. Uh, I used to own one of these back in 87. Of course the machine produced in 85 and it is a Snyder uh, CPC 464 which actually is the Amstrad CPC 464 uh, but um, uh, manufactured by Snyder in Germany and um, yeah, aimed for uh, Switzerland, Austria, available to Germany um, and um, all the German uh, speakers around the neighborhood. Um, but again, apart from the um, aesthetic part, the uh, color of the keys, which are light gray instead of the colorful uh, ones in on the Amstrad uh, uh, model, uh, which was a great decision, by the way, to make them uh, gray. Um, yeah, there, there are no other differences. Um, we'll be looking um, uh, inside the machine in a while because we have to change the belt. Uh, apparently, the cassette reco uh, recorder doesn't uh, work anymore, and I believe it's going to be the just the the belt that needs to be replaced. So, and then we'll have the chance to see that actually the motherboard is shielded uh, while the, on the Amstrad wasn't. And since I have both systems here today, I think we're going to do the, the same thing on this one. The Amstrad, the British model, the European model, however you want to call it. Uh, the same thing. I have powered up both machines, check the keyboards and everything, and apart from the dust, the only thing that is going uh, to be needing uh, something is of course the tape player on the side because they've been both on storage for 30 years or so 35 and um, yeah I believe it's gonna be just the belt for uh, that needs to be replaced and hopefully that will be all for today since uh, both machines are identical the way to get under the hood is absolutely the same six screws holding uh, the bottom part together with the uh, uh, top uh, part of um, the device and those have to be removed the uh, Schneider machine we can see here uses membrane sockets uh, to get the uh, keyboard connected and um, the Amstrad uses ribbon cable instead and here we you can see the big um, uh, shield for the strict German uh, interference uh, regulations some sort um, you cannot find this shield on the Amstrad um, UK model or the European model as we used to call it so yeah that's this is a major difference um, between the two models and the the way they handle the keyboard connections one is for membrane sockets uh, works with membrane sockets and the um, UK machine will will have the chance to see in a while that it uses si a single uh, simple uh, ribbon cable instead and uh, I guess now we can see this part the rib the uh, membrane edges that come in uh, off the uh, keyboard but, uh, the interest now is now on the other side we can see there is um, a belt in place not cut not, but just loose over time uh, it shouldn't be that loose that's why uh, the motor cannot spin the tape and this is the connector uh, from the main board that actually controls a relay uh, starting stopping the operation of uh, the motor when the game is loaded and when we press uh, control run and then any key you can hear a clicky sound and that's what it is the relay and the motor seems to be in excellent condition and the whole construction doesn't seem to have been opened before which is good the most important part is to find the right belt for this uh, job so there's one screw that holds this big um, roller um, cover on the top that should be removed. It's just this true because you have to uh, pass uh, the belt uh, over this and uh, in order to remove it but also in order to put the new one back um, in place. Uh, there is no 
difficulty, major difficulty, but um, you, you just make sure the uh, belt is of, uh, of the right size. And actually, now that I think of it, here is the one of the screws. Uh, I think of it, uh, you don't even have to remove the PCB on the side, but I just did a couple of screws, put them on the side. You can remove it just a bit in order to get in there um, on the on the black on the black uh, roller. You can uh, fit um, the new belt. So you can see that this is the old one. I have picked just the smaller one um, because the old one has been loose over time. So I'm going to put it right there in place, and then. Um, this footage is from the UK Amstrad, but it's the same thing I'm doing. Um, first, around the black roller underneath the PCB. Uh, the second uh, part will be uh, around the metallic uh, big roller down there. And um, the last part will be to go around the motor, which is uh, right there up at the top. And then, <coughs> check by hand that everything works smoothly and there is uh, actual movement, uh, smooth movement, so yeah, that's the last step. And then I, I must screw this PCB back in, into place, and I guess we're done with the, the second one as well. And then <coughs> we can uh, get on with my favorite part, which is testing now. And I think we have some movement here. The first beats are going um, onto the machine. It looks okay, sounds okay. Um, I was lucky because I got this machine uh, together with the introductory or welcome tape and you can see loading welcome one. Uh, the files have been found and now we're on block four. So let's see. Um, I remember a few things about this uh, welcome tape and it's really thrilling to step back in time and watch and yes it is loaded successfully um, the introduction um, is a bit different than the Amstrad I remember the Amstrad logo and there was a the Sun underneath the logo but um, we have successfully loaded the welcome tape and I'm glad so the tape works. Oh, I remember this one. Um, this is a graphics demo uh, as the first part uh, of the tape for the new uh, user. Um, yeah, it, it, I believe apart from the first screen, the rest will be the same because the same one um, has been presented um, right after the welcome screen on the Amstrad, uh, the UK model as well. Uh, back then, wow, isn't that impressive or what? Uh, and uh, okay, let's see what else is there. I be believe this is something that has to do with graphics again. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. It was something like the Christmas tree that it was flashing and uh, doing stuff. Amstrad uh, CPC was, uh, of course, the first model and the, uh, the one that uh, actually. Uh, got Amstrad um, to the top. Uh, CPC 464 was somehow uh, a smart move for everybody back then because you could have your monitor attached, uh, your um, uh, cassette player attached and everything within a reasonable price. So if you wanted the Spectrum, you, you could have the Spectrum, which was actually my first computer, and I love, I love it. Uh, but then I had to look for a monitor, I had to look for a tape recorder, um, and all that kind of stuff. External power supply, cables everywhere around the house. So it was compact. Amstrad was compact, and it was a nice machine, and not uh, something uh, exceptional. Uh, as for the hardware part, it was based around the Z80, again, um, 64K, more than enough for back in the day for what we used to do. This is kind of a spreadsheet, I believe. 
and statistics you can see bar charts you could play with uh, graphics and this is how you could uh, a demo how you could work with text files and word processing uh, quite impressive but let's face it uh, you cannot give a computer this uh, business uh, touch uh, because you, th the problem lies with the media when you have a tape recorder attached to it right so this computer what is was all about it was all about games and games and that's what uh, and how it was back then and although they tried like uh, releasing software like this the easy arms word by amsoft uh, which is a computer word processor the machine wasn't uh, a business machine at all um, but anyways um, it was a nice idea um, for um, little businesses offices uh, or for personal use um, trying to load this um, word processor now to see if the tape is in good condition and apparently looks like it is um, it was a solution for starters um, or for personal use as I said that's why they, they, they had to come up with something uh, quite fast and then um, after the successful uh, CPC 464 they came up with a successful um, 6128 uh, which has a, a disk drive instead of the tape uh, recorder and 128 kilobytes of RAM in the meantime they came up with CPC um, 664 it was actually the CPC 464 but uh, with a floppy drive uh, instead which was only out in the markets for just six months or so because uh, it was uh, very quickly replaced by the CPC 6128 which also had twice the memory uh, right so yeah those machines uh, have been such a hit back in 84 and 85 it was uh, surprisingly uh, reasonable the price you could get a uh, machine like that I really like the Snyder because of uh, the color of the keys of course it is a matter of taste but uh, to me uh, looks better with a gray light gray keys uh, instead of the colorful ones uh, that the UK model has um, yeah again the same machine um, in uh, other cover and other color uh, let's take a look at the ports although it's uh, the same you see the monitor connection over there 5 volts coming in from the monitor uh, floppy disk um, edge connector printer edge connector the joystick port and the IO which actually is sound although there is um, this built-in speaker right here and on the side the on off switch and the volume right the same thing like the Amstrad the UK model uh, everything is the same um, this machine um, has been produced by Schneider the computer division uh, back then I believe Schneider is now under Fujitsu Siemens but I have to look it up to be sure um, and uh, as you can tell a beautiful machine uh, back in the day there wasn't anything else you could ask for back now to the UK model uh, we fixed today together here uh, with you both of the systems uh, are looking great the tape recorders are uh, working fine um, I have just managed to load the previous tape uh, with the same games um, over uh, this machine now and I think we're good for the day we can call it a wrap in a while this is the Amstrad with the colorful keys the UK model of the European version um, the most popular uh, Amstrad uh, back in the day I don't think um, the uh, 6128 um, had better sales but I have to look it up most of the titles uh, that uh, were bundled with uh, the Amstrad as a brand new 
uh, computer out in the markets uh, have been made under the supervision of Amsoft something like a daughter company to Amstrad but actually Amsoft got in touch with other software houses uh, around England and Spain uh, in order to create uh, titles to support the Amstrad uh, while still on the shelves uh, like uh, this one here Amsoft uh, guys also they tried um, apparently and in the end they didn't do well they didn't do well and Amsoft just somehow disappeared now some of the differences you can tell is the ribbon cable inside the uh, 464 the UK model here it is the ribbon cable for the keyboard instead of the membrane um, the ports are the same power the same joystick port there is the same uh, pretty much the same PCB except for the big uh, shield the uh, chips around the ROM um, and uh, the only socketed chip is the Z80 up there everything is the same except again uh, for the ribbon cable and the big shield so I guess it was a successful mission today we managed to fix a couple of cassette players for the Amstrad CPC 464 this one uh, the well-known and po very very popular uh, UK model the Amstrad 64K uh, um, coming from 1984 and uh, now we have a system restored and on the other uh, hand we do have the German version of the same machine the Schneider fixed as well um, it was a very productive day I may say so summarizing the classic problem with these machines although very reliable very reliable indeed um, it's only a matter of time um, by when the um, belt of the drive uh, shall fail and uh, it's, it's it's a natural thing over time um, all you have to do is to replace the um, uh, belt inside the tape player and make sure that it's the correct size um, and um, that's all you have to do uh, those machines rarely fail and it, it is a good thing we can still play with those um, some proper attention and uh, they will be working uh, for many years to come again thanks for watching uh, guys consider subscribing I'll be catching you with another video uh, soon uh, with another system from the past uh, probably from the 70s or the 80s or another console another game uh, or whatever might come over my way for um, a repair so thank you very much bye